All right, hey everybody, it's Dave with DII. Thanks for tuning in tonight. We're gonna to be talking about getting gigs, especially playing hand pans. So a lot of people out there have gotten their hand pans uh, and then they start playing a little bit and they think, oh, maybe I can get a gig. Um, so today I wanted to kind of cover a couple, you know, bullet points of like how you get started with gigs and uh, how you can just get your planning and going and um, maybe make that happen. So um, Daniel, are you in the background? Yes, I am, Dave, how are you doing? I'm great. How's it going, Daniel? Good. My face is on the screen. Yeah, right on. So everybody out there, don't forget to like and subscribe the YouTube channel here. Thanks for again. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're gonna be talking about gigs. Uh, Daniel, yes, you're, you're 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 newer to music than I am, mm. right? Yes. Uh, but you've played a couple gigs already, right? Yeah, I played a couple gigs. Um, mm -hmm. It's been it's been an experience. I don't do too many gigs, but um, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, right on. It's, so, good, it's definitely a good experience. So. Yeah, right on. So uh, just from your first time, a lot of people are super nervous on their first gig. Do you remember what you did, what you played on your first gig? I mean, because you play ukulele and handpan. Let's just talk, talk about handpan gig. Just handpan gigs. Okay, my yeah. first hand. Well, I think it was with you because when we did the Art in the Park stuff, we were doing both. Oh, Art in the Park? Yep, that's right. <laughs> Art in the park. We were doing, but... Yeah. Actually, I'm trying to think of the real first gig was might be the uh, Laguna Beach. The Laguna oh, Beach taco yeah. taco, taco place. Yep, taco that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, right on. So we're going to get into the topic here. But if anybody out there has any questions or comments, feel free to put them at the comment screen. We're going to do our best to answer your questions and comments as we go live here. So it's nice. All right. So the uh, topics I have listed here are uh, if you want to get gigs, uh, first thing you want to do is learn some music. <laughs> See, it seems obvious, right? But you've got your hand pan. Uh, what you want to do is you want to, well, let me go down the list first, then we'll start going down uh, ABC. So learn some music or basically uh, become a performer or learn how to perform or any kind of topic in there or get a selection of songs, uh, that sort of thing together. Again, well, I'm using the word song loosely, by the way, because on hand pan, it's not usually like a really song. Some people will sing along, some people won't. Um, uh, but it's, I'm not really talking about like sheet music, learning a song like Fear to, uh, Fear to Lease or anything like that. Uh, ask around, play for free. So that's another way to kind of get some experience playing gigs. Uh, so you can just start asking around saying, hey, do you mind if I play for your yoga studio? Some people will be like, eh, I don't know. And maybe you have a friend that owns a yoga studio or a friend that goes to a yoga studio that knows the owner, something like that. Um, get promo pics and videos. So if you play any of these free gigs, that sort of thing, um, you can get some pictures and videos of you playing and make sure you get everybody's permission for that. Um, uh, get equipment and gear, contact and advertise, contact basically people that are interested in maybe hiring musicians, uh, thinking about travel expenses, thinking about a contract, thinking about how to socialize at the gig. And then of course, getting paid. <laughs> so, all right. So uh, learning music, first of all, Daniel, what would you suggest with uh, learning music? I know, you know, in my brain, but what was the first thing that comes to mind with you? Well, uh, I, learning music, you would have to practice because basically you want to know how long the event is and you want to have enough content to actually. That's right. The event. So that's right. You, you know, like when I'm doing it, I kind of like think of things that I want to do. And actually, I kind of incorporate, since I do other instruments nowadays, I incorporate all the other instruments. Like, I'll play a ukulele song. Mm -hmm. Next, I do, you know, hand pan. But I would have enough <laughs> that I can actually do to cover whatever time that we're actually doing it. So yeah, absolutely. You would have to learn, you know. Yeah. So, you know, this kind of goes along with some of our lessons that we've taught before. Um, and... When you're a beginner to handpan, everyone always thinks you need to play fast, loud, and maybe not loud, but fast, and all these cool licks and everything. But truthfully, people are drawn to the sound of the handpan, whether you're playing fast or slow, a lot of notes or fewer notes, just the, you know a couple notes. People are like, oh, ooh, what is that? That's a pretty sound, right? So you can draw things out. Like, let's say um, you have a first performance and it's 30 minutes long. Uh, you could draw things out and make it um, a longer performance with fewer songs, quote unquote songs, uh, but just by playing slower or um, without going so fast through the song, right? So like you could just play, do, do, do. maybe 
maybe incorporate a little snap or something. <laughs> you can use all sorts of methods, just kind of like give yourself some time. Right? And it's just kind of like you're just chilling out and people are going to listen. They're going to be kind of like, wow, what do you do? What are you doing there? And then typically what you want to do is try to build a little bit. If you have something like slow like that, you want to try to either get a little bit louder or a little bit more notes going on. So so I just added a couple, sorry, just added a couple notes on top there. And then maybe you come up with a jam, like a little rhythm thing. So we frequently talk about rhythm on the handpan, playing something like this, like a bass and a snare drum kind of feel. Right? So it's kind of just fun to groove out. Right, you're just chilling out. And as people are mingling, maybe let's, uh, again, I'm just imagining that you're kind of playing not really a performance gig, but more of like a coffee shop where you're almost background music. People are looking over occasionally. Some people are watching you the whole time. Uh, but let's just think about it like a coffee shop gig or or even like a, a, a yoga studio where maybe they're doing yoga and they're doing their thing. And you're kind of on the on the side doing a little background thing just to kind of keep people entertained. So uh, that's kind of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about this this first kind of gig. So you just want to like start slow, do some really quite easy stuff that you feel comfortable with. So you're not sweating bullets going, oh, my gosh, this is my first, you know, quote unquote performance or whatever. Um, but, yeah, you can do a lot with a little. So just go ahead and, and take simple ideas and then take that simple idea and then build on that simple idea. And just add a couple things here, add a couple things there. And then what you want to do is break it up. So uh, once you get your little melody going, maybe take a second to just uh, stop playing. Like sit there and look around for a minute, you know, and maybe you do some longer tones, some rolls. Right, because that has a totally different sound than the, the beat kind of uh, melodies, where it has a, a steady beat to it. You can take the beat out of it and just make it more, I don't know, ambiguous. Um, and people are still going to be drawn to it. And it also kind of gives your performance an ebb and a flow and, and some um, of that kind of thing. So that those would be some of my first suggestions on learning music. But well, in it, in, in but like just said, as far as like, yeah. Yeah, Dave, like like you said, um, you know, it depends on the event that you're actually doing. Yeah, and, exactly. And, you know, if they want you to play for an hour and just hang out. Yeah, definitely. I love what you're yeah. talking about because I know you tend to like go faster and you try to do yeah. everything all yeah, at once. Yeah, you try to do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when, you, when you're when you done, like when you're done with that, it's like 10 minutes. Now you're like, now what do I do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then one of my, you know, also like say you're in a coffee shop or say maybe not yoga studio perhaps, but let's say you're in a public place, even a street corner or something like that. Engaging people uh, helps to uh, elongate your performance also. So you don't have to be playing all that sort of thing while you're talking to somebody. Maybe you're just sitting there cruising out and you can just start talking to somebody. Hey, how's your day going? Oh, I'm doing great. You know, da, 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 da. I'm really having a good time. That's my first gig. Did you know it's my first gig? Yeah. Put some uh, money in my tip jar, please. <laughs> and you can even stop, like talk to them for a second and then come back to it. Right. So you just become really casual. You become one with the audience so that the audience feels in touch with you. Um, and uh, that sort of th stuff is really fun, too. And just because you're talking and interacting with the audience, that is also taking up some time and making your uh, the, the time that you're playing a little bit longer as well. Um, as far as learning music, so there's different sounds that you can play on the handpan, right? So you've got the, the tones, the notes. But you also have these textures over here, like you can slap it. You can you could do like a purely rhythm kind of so song. You know, you get the idea. 
obviously you're playing like a lot of rhythm sounds or you can make little sounds, whatever you want. And in this case, with this hand pan, this is an ohm hand pan and the ohm has the tongues on the bottom. So you could flip it over and have like a completely different sound. That ohm sounds awesome online. <laughs> Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So now you've got a different sound, different texture. Some people own uh, multiple hand pans with different scales. Uh, so and also, by the way, even if you didn't have the tongues on the bottom, you've got the goo hole on the bottom, and the goo hole produces a bass tone, and you can play all sorts of fun stuff. Right with that with that goo, uh, you could do rhythms and bass tones and all sorts of fun stuff with that as well. So just getting the learning the music part is really learning variations of different things that you want to play uh, that are fast or slow to break up the uh, the pace of the the uh, performance and uh, just elongate it into a like half hour or full full hour that sort of thing. Actually, it was pretty funny, Dave. What I teach right now <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> It's like I start out with a one two three, and I've done this in a gig or I just did my practice mm -hmm. in the beginning. That's all I yeah. did was yeah, 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 practice, yeah. and it was just over and over and over again. And that took like, you know, five minutes, five to ten minutes. And right. you, can, you can stretch it, and it's just yeah. practice, and it's just doing the scale and then switching to something else. But it's just different patterns that I have that I do yep. all the time. So it's, it's pretty funny because people hear it, and then they're like, oh, my God, what is that? And all I was doing was my practice. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, so. yep. there you go. For you. All right, look. Practice. <laughs> yep, exactly. Practice. All right, I'm, I'm going to move on real quick. So um, if you need to, you know, figure out how to get your quote unquote first gig, uh, even if it's unpaid, uh, you just got, like I said, just kind of need to ask around, uh, play for free. Um, because if you play for free and if you ask permission, if you can have photographs or take photos with uh, you and a bunch of people, or let's say um, take a picture of the back of their heads and watching you play, that's always a really good um, thing to show people like that they're involved watching you. Um, or if somebody reaches over and they, you know, you give them permission to play your hand pan and they have a big smile on their face and you're, you've got a big smile on your face and you're incorporating the, you know, the interactiveness of somebody approaching you. That's always a good promo shot as well. But yeah, just any kind of way you can get some promo shots uh, where uh, you're with people or on a stage somewhere with some nice lighting. That's always a good way of, of getting uh, those promo shots. Um, and also you get the experience of playing for free. You just get the experience of going out there and just doing it. Um, let's see. Oh, and just by the way, um, when you start getting like real gig calls, that sort of thing, I'm noticing like kind of like uh, one thing that works pretty well for hand pan is cocktail hours for weddings and events and that sort of thing. Um, so usually not much more than an hour and they're just contracting you to play essentially background music for people that are drinking cocktails and socializing. So you're not really the centerpiece, uh, featured musician or dance, you know, dance crew or anything like that, uh, dance band, you are just background music. And it's usually a fairly, um, simple kind of scenario where you show up, you set up your instruments and uh, the time comes like six o'clock, you start playing and at seven o'clock you finish playing. It's usually people while wander up and that sort of thing. Um, and say hello sometimes, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you're in a corner the whole time. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's an interesting way of getting involved and, you know, and getting yourself out there. Um, but that those kind of gigs usually pay some money. So those are some good gigs to get started with. Um, we're talking about getting promo and uh, pictures and videos. Yeah, like I said, pictures with the play for free. If you can never get videos, little clips, obviously everything's on video or on social media these days. Um, uh, I'm going to move on to getting equipment and gear in a second, but just while I have your attention, don't forget to like, and subscribe the page. If you're watching, um, or the page, the, uh, YouTube, uh, channel. <laughs> and, uh, also Smash if you have any comments, button. yeah, if you have any comments or questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comments bar and we'll try to answer those comments or questions as we go along. Diane's um, here. She said, hi. Hey, right on. Hi, Dan. <laughs> okay. Uh, getting equipment and gear so um a lot of people that's what they want to do uh kind of up front once they kind of get serious they want to get their hand pan a backpack uh maybe a stand or something like that to play on um 
But when you're playing gigs, there's also some other additional gear that you might want to get. For instance, like a microphone stand, right? Like you always have to have your trusty microphone stand. Uh, Daniel, do you have a microphone and a microphone stand over there with you? Uh, I can't remember. Actually, which. here, I'll, I'll put my my thing on here too. But Okay. Yeah, actually, uh, like equipment is kind of, you never know what you need. The first thing is like, you have to find out if you have power at the event. Oh, yeah, power is always <laughs> an issue. Yeah. So, and that'll determine, and then how many people will be there will determine the speaker setup that you will want to bring. Um, I have like a 50 watt, we've done a little gig and it was like just the small speaker. It, it kind of was not enough, but it worked. I would suggest, you know, just always test that out. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, what else equipment? Mics, obviously, there's always been a big question about mics, I guess, what that you would use. Mm -hmm. I, I have this one, but I might get another one um, when I do more uh, uh, gigs because you kind of want two of these. these. This is a Shure Beta instrument mic, so it's really nice. You can also use this for vocals if you need to. Another good mic, uh, actually, is one of Dave's. Is. <laughs> this is the SM58, I'm sure. These are like the tried and true industry standard. <laughs> and they yeah. also have a beta one that has a blue ring on it that has a little bit more be or better, I guess, sound quality, supposedly. That's what they say. But these are usually good, too. But all in all, like I have two mics because I usually do small gigs, but I would highly suggest like three because you would have two two of the instrument mics going down on your on on your um on your hand pan and then you can have one to talk out of you won't have mm -hmm. to switch that out every single time and then you showed a, a a microphone stand i found a really cool microphone stand this is how big it is but it shrinks down to this size and it goes it goes full size so it's really cool and you can adjust it for anything so um, is there a brand on the brand name on that one you can go to amazon but it like i don't remember what brand this is but this is really cool yeah. it's really sturdy i think it was like kazumi or something like that <laughs> right right sturdy. Kind of odd name. like i always had like the problem where you have to adjust and that thing sinks this one doesn't yeah. do it right right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know what i mean and those yep. little things like that like don't skip get if you can get don't get the basic brand those things yeah, last right. like one one gig and one they're gig, already yeah. they're destroyed like you kind of yeah. want something that's spend a little extra money on it if you plan on doing a lot of gigs because these things get better. yeah same thing with cords, cords like microphone cords and all that sort of thing yeah oh yeah so you're gonna yeah. want to have like microphone oops, you're gonna want to have like a microphone stand microphone um cords microphones um and you know microphones you can go on probably excuse me you can probably go on for like a full show just talking about different kind of microphones. Oh, yeah. but there's like, so like, many. Yeah, there's so yeah many. like Daniel said, I mean, uh, just the standard, you know, sure, vocal mics will get you started. Mm -hmm. um, they're really sturdy. They do a really good job. The other thing, too, they're, they're called dynamic mics. Yeah. And so uh, the sound basically, uh, it pulls the sound from in front of the mic. There's another kind of microphone called a condenser, condenser mic, mics, which yeah. basically like picks up everything in the whole room. This is the uh, condenser mic. <laughs> okay, yeah. So a condenser mic, uh, it's it has a good sound for recordings on handpan because it picks up all of the nuances of the handpan. For a, for a live performance, what happens is uh, all of the sounds around you can go through that microphone, and there's it tends to be a lot of feedback problems. Yeah. So the dynamic mics, if you're in a live setting, are usually probably a little bit better um, because they will reduce the amount of feedback that's potentially a, could that's be a why problem. The instrument mics, these shoot straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It goes straight down, and it's only in that area, I guess. Yeah, and the other thing too is like if you did get a speaker like Daniel was talking about, let's say you're getting like some kind of sound system with speakers, uh, you want to always make sure that the speakers are in front of you and in front of the microphone. Uh, because if the microphone is pointing towards the speaker, you get this thing called feedback because the sound that's coming out of the speaker goes into the microphone and then comes out of the speaker again and goes back into the microphone in a big circle. And that's what they call feedback. Right. So uh, if you move the speaker in front of 
the microphone. Now the microphone's talking, you know, here you are with the microphone uh, and it's not facing the speaker anymore. It's behind the speaker. So it reduces the amount of potential feedback. Yeah, feedback or whatever. Actually, yeah. I have another thing that I sometimes use. Actually, I'm just pulling, I have a little bag with like my mini thing and these are the cables I had in there. Like I have a, I think this is a quarter inch or whatever to, to what instrument cable. Uh, XLR is a long one. And then that's XLRs are those three. And this is usually for your microphone. Mm -hmm. And then I have one for the instrument. <laughs> So if you want to have an instrument, instrument mic, sure. Instrument, yeah. Well, that one's for ukulele. You can plug in or whatever. And then it also can plug into, I don't know what these are, but Davey, let me use this and I still have it. But it's a, that transducer thing that hooks up to. Oh, yeah. Ensoul. E-N-S-O-U-L, yeah. I believe. En okay. Ensoul. Yeah. This is kind of cool, but I would still, I would set this up with mics on top. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do. And then you can have eq the sound and then so you might need a mixer also so that's another thing yeah yeah the end <laughs> end small mic the end soul mic sound pretty good they they have like a magnet and it goes like attaches right to the instrument yeah um they do sound pretty good they're probably pretty good for live performances i wouldn't really suggest it for recordings and that sort of thing but yeah it, it's a client you could get you started definitely no i've played with it and it sounds super cool like it gives yeah. it extra ding ding because like the hand pan is loud in a closed setting but when it's open it it's it, it gets lost mm -hmm. and then when you have this it gives it that extra boost that it that you need to hear it yeah so it's like yeah. super cool so I, I i don't know if they actually sell these anymore but oh, yeah i'm pretty sure they do yeah. and so e-n-s-o-u-l i believe so it's basically and two pieces like, like that and it goes inside the goo hole one inside and on the other and it magnets boom Yep. And then this has like a connection for the instrument and you put it into a channel and it makes a sound. It's pretty cool. Yep. And then uh, one big uh, thing for gear also is always make sure that you bring extension cords. Yes. <laughs> Especially if you have anything electronic that you need to run, uh, speakers, mixing uh, board, uh, make sure you have a, a, the, the surge protector, right, with all the multiple inputs in it. Uh, make sure if you have a phone that you bring your uh, charger <laughs> for your phone in <laughs> yes. case you want to make videos or anything like that. Uh, so all of that, you want to have it dedicated to that backpack. Like whatever your equipment, your your gear backpack is, you're going to buy new. You're going to buy a new charger. You're going to buy a new <laughs> power strip, a new uh, you know extension cord, and it always stays in that backpack because if yeah. you take it out, you're going to forget it. One of those gigs at, along the line, and no, you're going to be like, oh man. That's what I do. I have I just pulled all the stuff out of my one little gig bag that it just stays like that. And I know I have whatever yep. is in there. I can do something like I can hook up like basically because you, you're always asking for wires. Yeah. You know, can you hook up there? That's why I said in the beginning, know where the power is coming from. And, yeah. And, and if you have to, if it has to be battery powered nowadays, there are options where you can set up gigs anywhere and it doesn't oh yeah with the battery power. powered uh yeah, battery. Mixing, yeah, yeah. mixing amplifiers and it's not even there. a generator where it's loud it's just a yeah. battery pack that you can set up for hours and play <laughs> you know it's kind of crazy yeah oh and also with power cords uh make sure you bring in an, an adapter some because sometimes sometimes they don't always have the three prongs sometimes they have the old style two prong <laughs> mm -hmm. so you just want to make sure you cover the bases and all that stuff because it's always a big old drag when you show up to the gig and you can't plug in yeah and then always know where you're gonna be ask for a picture if you can't case it out but oh yeah like, yeah because you want to know like if you're in a tight spot you need to know what you need to have you know what i mean for. yeah yeah because <laughs> here you're like oh my god i have all this stuff it's like crazy yeah but, yeah yeah it's so funny so yeah get your equipment get your gear together for these gigs um up front so that you're not you know taken off guard when you get to the gig um Contact and advertise. All right, so once you kind of get all this under your belt, you've got your promo picks, you've got your gear, you've got some uh, like a, a set list, you can play some songs for 30 minutes or an hour. Um, then you're gonna wanna start contacting and advertising people. And obviously you can do stuff like that on uh, social media and you could just say, hey, I'm, I would love to play at your next uh, event. So, you know, contact me, da da da, put your QR code or whatever it is, you're at so-and-so at Instagram, um, have them contact you. But uh, sometimes the personal approach works really well too. So you could actually go to your local yoga studios, local meditation studios, and just ask them, 
you just ask them. <laughs> That's all it is. You just walk in. You say, hey, I'm a handpan player. And, and you just be totally uh, right up front. You know, I'm, I'm looking to get started with playing handpan on, on handpan gigs and, and for people. And I really haven't done a whole lot of performing. But I'm wondering if I could come in and, and play for you for a little while. And, you know, maybe first time you do it for free or something like right up front. You say, hey, I'll, first time I'll do it for free. But maybe the second time we can coordinate something. So maybe $50 a gig, you know, whatever it is, kind of get it started. Um, and negotiate right up front and basically tell them up front that you don't want to play for free for the rest of your life. Yeah. Maybe the first time is free, but let's maybe uh, work on something in the future if people like it, where yeah. you actually get paid. We actually have a question, Dave. You want me to go? Oh, yeah. 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 All right. We have Barbara Lawrence on. I'll add this to the thing here. Hey, Barbara. Thanks for uh, the comment, by the way. She said, hey, hi, thanks for the video. What equipment, if any, do you suggest for opening mics? My local library has one every month. I have a Rav G Pygmy and a Woody Tritone Tongue Drum. Mm. All right, so open mic nights, that's an interesting question. Usually open mic nights have their own audio equipment and their own speakers and their own mixing board, usually, right? Because it, they usually want you to walk up to the mic, and then when you're done, you walk away and somebody else walks up. And that's not your microphone, that's not your sound system, you're just part of the, part of the game <laughs> or whatever, part of the, whatever, the environment of that open mic. And uh, so at that point, um, yeah, I guess it all depends on how much uh, they have for the open mic. Like, do they have somebody running a soundboard? If they have somebody running a soundboard, then they might actually have another mic for your hand pan or your instruments and a vocal mic if you're doing vocals. Uh, otherwise, usually from what I've seen, it's usually a pretty basic setup for most open mics. It's usually like one mic and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, you just, you got to go in it with this an open mind and be prepared for something to go wrong. You know, don't, don't ever always expect open mic nights to have like the perfect sound or anything like that. Uh, when it does have the perfect sound or the perfect scenario, Hey, thumbs up. You're going to have a great time, but just always just be prepared. You might even want to bring your own mic and your own mic cable. Uh, because even uh, some of these open mic nights, they might have a microphone, but it might be really bad. You could just say, hey, do you mind if we just plug in my mic for, mm -hmm. for mine? And they, they all use it, either say yes or no. Um, you usually, open mic nights wouldn't have to bring all of the electronic uh, stuff. You probably wouldn't need to bring your own speaker. Well, you might, if you were like, like if you were a guitar singer songwriter, you probably might bring your own small amplifier uh, guitar and, and chord and all that sort of thing. So if you're a hand pan or some kind of um, um, non-electric instrument like the hand pan or like the tongue drums, um, I'm not sure you would need to bring your own amp. Uh, it all depends. It, so you'd I probably, you'd probably need to ask around. Yeah, it would depend. Yeah, I think it would depend on like, uh, I would ask first if I can bring my setup. Yeah. And then they can have it on stage for you and you, all you have right. to do is bring the instrument up and then go from there. If they yeah. already have a speaker, um, like I would say, have a mixer with two mics and two mic stands already set up because then you could just plug the mixer into the monitor and go straight into whatever they're doing, whatever speaker system that they have. That would be the easiest, you know. Yeah. And, you, and you, there's yeah. no like, it's just the mixer, two cables, two mic stands, two mics. That's all you would need, and then hook up yeah. to the, whatever they're they're doing. Yeah, just, you know, I think talking with them up front and just figuring out yeah. what kind of uh, stuff they have uh, available to you. That's probably the most part is just the communication up front. Yeah. But even communication up front, you got to be careful because sometimes you'll talk to one person on the phone and that might be the manager in the front. But the sound guy in the back is actually a different person. <laughs> and so sometimes there might be even miscommunication with them at wh whatever facility you're at. So when you get there, you probably need to bring your own stuff just in case. So when you actually talk to the sound guy or who the sound person is, uh, you just double check with them, make sure everything's in order. Yeah, if you can get in there beforehand. Hey, can I come by the place, wherever the open mic is, and I want to check yeah. it out. I, I, yeah. I am a proponent of that. Like, I always, even if it's an open mic, I would definitely check out what they have because, you know, you definitely, you want to have a decent sound, I guess. Or yeah, just yeah, ready. definitely. You don't want to be like messing around with mics. Oh, do you have another mic or whatever? If yeah. You want to do good. And then following up on the uh, contact. Thanks, Barbara. And the yeah, thank you, Barbara. <laughs> following up on the contacting and advertising, uh, once you do start getting some gigs, uh, that's really a great place to be because let's say you start playing a little cocktail hour here or there, then you start getting referrals. So you try to make sure that you always talk to those people, whoever hired you, 
at the end of the gig, you always want to make sure that you say thank you and give them maybe a, a, a business card or whatever it is these days, some kind of QR code on your phone. Make sure that they can contact you in the future for any other kind of bookings or events. Because if they like you, they, you want to make sure that they remember you so that they call you again. So that's always, that's kind of down here. I always talked about the socialized part. You don't want to socialize too much with sometimes the, the people that are um, uh, working these events and hiring you, but you want to get just enough in there, some professionalism to show them that you're serious and that you'd be willing to work again. Um, let's move on to travel and expenses. So a lot of times musicians, when they first start playing gigs, they, they don't even think about like everything that's involved with playing the gig. Uh, and they basically cheat themselves out of some money sometimes. So when you're thinking about playing a gig, everyone thinks, oh, I'm only playing for an hour. I'm only playing for 30 minutes. So I should only get paid for like 50 bucks or 100 bucks or something like that. But that's not really the, the, <laughs> the way it goes. Because you've got, not only do you have all of your equipment that you purchased and everything like that, but you've got gas expenses that you've got to get if you're taking a car. Uh, you've got to, you know, whatever expense that is, or a bus or whatever train, whatever it is, however you got to get there, you've got to pay for those expenses. Um, and then it's just the time. Yes, yeah, the setup time, it's the travel time. So usually like a 30 minute gig or a one hour gig, it, it, depending on where it is, if it's local to you, uh, might only be, uh, you know, 15 or 20 minutes away. But like here in Los Angeles, it might be two hour drive. <laughs> you know, it's across town, but it's a two hour drive. So, you know, next thing you know, your one hour gig becomes a six hour gig. You were gone. You were basically working to get there, play and working to get home. And it's like six hours. So it's almost a, a full day or a half day or something like that. So you have to start thinking about, OK, what what would a like I always think this, what would a lawyer charge <laughs> <laughs> to talk with me for 30 minutes? And that lawyer, you don't go to his office. He has to come to you. Right. Yeah. They wouldn't just charge you for that 30 minutes. They would charge you for the whole darn thing. You know, they would. Everybody knows how lawyers charge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you've got to think really professionally and think about, OK, what I'm, what's the value that I'm worth? What you know, what's the effort that I'm putting into this? Um, and then you also kind of like let the client know you in a very, you know, gentle way, obviously, is like, well, hey, you know, I'm going to drive a couple hours to get there, drive a couple hours back. So I think this price is, you know, a, a better price than 50 bucks or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, if it's also there's there's so many variations on that. Let's say it's a steady gig. So let's say all of a sudden you start getting a steady gig every Wednesday at, at um, from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. You're playing at a local bar or something like that. Um, a nightclub, whatever you want to call it. Um, in that case, you might want to reduce the price a little bit because you know it's going to be regular income. So you want it, and it also sometimes becomes uh, competitive with other performers or other musicians. So at that point, you just kind of have to figure out and massage it a little bit and figure out what price works best for you. And but you're not also cheating yourself, but you're getting the best value out of it. Um, it's always so there. A, you go. It is. It's always a tough one, you know, especially as artists. But yeah, we're, you know, it's like you said, like, it, you know, we had somebody that wanted to do some ham ham stuff, you know, in a, and it took an hour to get there already. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? They want to, want you to play for an hour. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be three hours because it's hour there, hour back. And that's cutting it because you want to get there early to, <laughs> to yeah. set up and then make sure you, because it takes a little while to set up. So that's right. It takes a little while to set up and all. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Um, contract. A lot of people will use contracts with uh, gigs and that sort of thing. That's usually for the more professional professionals. Uh, and it's usually, even if it's an email contract, even if you just contact somebody by email and say, hey, I'm playing from six to nine, you know, or whatever time period it is, six to seven on Tuesday, May 15th, you know, all these very specific basic things. You need to make sure that those are in writing that somebody at least responds or they say, I agree to this. Yes, we both agree to these terms and the amount that's going to be paid. You might want to even make sure that you agree to how the amount is going to be paid. You might want to say something like $50 cash or you might want to say $50 via PayPal or Venmo or whatever it is. Uh, because sometimes those stipulations, when you get to the gig, if you didn't have it organized before, all of a sudden, this person's like, oh, I'll pay you next week. Remember, I told you it's 50 bucks. It's all good, but I'll pay you next week. And you're like, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. This is a little bit awkward, right? So then it becomes awkward. So you want to make sure all of those details are outlined in an email or uh, some kind of written format. Uh, again, like each, each person agrees to it. And yeah. so everyone knows what's going on. 
Yeah, that's that's really important. A lot of people get stuck with that stuff. And, you know, I, I've even known some guys that have real formal form, forms. And uh, if you've got if you're like a regular musician and you've got a lot of equipment, say you've got your hand pan, you've got your stands, you've got your gear. And let's say you have to bring a sound system, too. So a couple speakers and a mixing board and all that sort of thing. That stuff's heavy. And <laughs> yeah. so let's say you're playing for somebody that lives in the hills and they've got like a flight of stairs that you have to go up to their backyard. So that flight of stairs might take you like 10 minutes to go up and down with just like one you know load of stuff. You have to go up and down at multiple times. So then you get super tired before the So I know some guys, they will actually charge extra for stairs. Wow. Um, so that sort well, of thing. That's a good idea because so, you never like yeah, it does. It sucks. <laughs> it does yeah. Suck. Yeah. And, and I've also heard people with beach gigs. So at, at first glance, you're like, oh, it'll be fun to play on the beach. You know, but then you realize, oh, my gosh, like this beach is a really big beach. I have to walk across the sand for like <laughs> a football field to get over there and, you know, whatever it is. So at first it seems like it's a lot of fun. But, you know, once you start doing this stuff a lot, uh, you realize, oh, <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah had... we always ask, always ask, like, how do you get in and how do you get out? Because yeah, you yeah. have the park. Parking. You have also. To, yeah, <laughs> you have the park. And if it's like downtown LA, oh my God. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and they take all this, you know, you know, something. Yeah, it's it's kind of yeah. Make sure that also goes with the, that goes with the travel expenses, you know, parking fees, anything like that. Make sure that yeah. uh that's all taken care of with your contract or with the negotiation with your, whoever you're talking about. And also food. Food sometimes uh if it's like a, a cocktail hour uh, uh or a more of a special event, they will have food for the guests. Uh, you don't want to just assume that you can eat the food. Sometimes they don't expect you to eat the food and it would be like a little bit rude or whatever for you just to walk over and start eating the food. So you need to make sure you talk to them before and maybe that's part of your negotiation too. Okay, I'll do this for 150 bucks and they go, oh, 150 seems like a lot or whatever. How about 125? You go, okay, how about 125, but you feed me, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that way you get your food involved and um, or it, it doesn't even have to be part of the negotiation. You could just ask, hey, is food available? Is it okay if I eat? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I forgot even breaks. They usually so include you, it. They usually include. Yeah, that's another thing for the contracts is breaks too. You want to make sure that you um, give yourself a break. So you, typical is person will play for an hour, uh, and then they'll take a fifteen minute break, play forty five minutes, take a fifteen minute break, play for forty five minutes, take a fifteen minute break. That's very typical um, for musicians. And you want to make sure that's stipulated in the contract too. Like I will play for the first hour and then take a fifteen minute break, that sort of thing. So all of those things are kind of important to, when you're talking with a professional that's uh, hiring you for something like a um, cocktail hour or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, socialize. So when you're at those gigs, it all depends on the gig, but you know you want to make sure that you socialize a little bit and be uh, be nice and and cordial with the people that you're the guests that you're working with. A lot of people are very effervescent. A lot of people are very gregarious, and they have no problem with like mixing with people, and it's very easy to do. Uh, but you always, as a, as a professional, you have to make sure that it's tempered a little bit so that people don't see you as just like hanging out. Uh -oh. So you're, if you're doing a contracted gig, uh, they're expecting you to do a certain amount of work for that contracted amount. So if you start like chilling out and talking with people a little too much or whatever it is, and the next thing you know, it seems like you're quote unquote getting away with something maybe. So uh, make sure you socialize in a very appropriate way and make sure you're very uh, cordial and uh, professional. <laughs> um, and also with that socializing, you can mix and mingle. Uh, if, if you're at an event, like a, an official event, like a wedding or something like that, you might not want to be handing out cards to the guests. That might be like a no, no. The, um, whoever hired you might be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not appropriate because they set up the gig, right? They set up the event. So it's more for their event. And if they want, if somebody wants to contact you, uh, for getting a gig, they want them to go through them. I don't know if that makes sense. So uh, whoever the booking agent is, they sometimes want any uh, any uh, business to go through them and then they that agent then calls you again. Uh, so just make sure that if you are passing out cards and that sort of thing that you are thinking uh, professionally and you might wanna ask the business, whoever you're work working with, uh, if it's okay for you to pass out cards or that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and then finally getting paid, like we talked about before, make sure it's in the contract uh, how to get paid. What I've seen a lot of people do recently is they use these QR codes. I love these QR codes. These things are so awesome. So especially if you're playing somewhere casual, like a, a coffee shop or on a street corner, that sort of thing, it, it, you just put it on a little stand in front of you while you're playing. And that way people, and you can even say, please tip me. 
And I, I strongly suggest <coughs> that you put the amount on there. Please tip me five bucks, right? Because frequently people don't know what to tip you. They, re they really don't. And so uh, if you give them a suggestion, they might be like, oh, that's too much, but I'll give them two bucks, right? <laughs> so now at least they're giving you something, even if they didn't agree with the amount that you put on there. And they're still going to give you something, hopefully. And it kind of draws their attention to like, oh, this is like a valuable thing. Yeah, I will, I will, you know, uh, pay them for that. Mm -hmm. So these QR codes are great um, for just casual walk, you know, walk people that are walking by that might want to tip you um, rather than having a formal tip jar with cash in it. You can have that, too. Um, uh, but yeah, I think it's totally fine to have like the amount on there, whatever you want to amount. You could say suggested amount, 20 bucks with like a little smiley face or something like that. <laughs> you know, uh, but these, these things are great because it goes right into your account. Um, the other thing too, technology uh, nowadays. yeah, yeah. You can use these also for contracting with the gig or whoever's going to pay you. Maybe they can just pay you, uh, through one of those, uh, sources. Um, all right, Daniel, I don't know what, what else we've got to talk about here. I mean, uh, I, I think, I think, a lot of whole, ground. I, I think the whole point of this, we've, you know, we've been getting a lot of questions about gigs and stuff like that because people are starting to play they're getting yeah. a little better or they just want people to, you know, people are asking them because the hand pan is a unique instrument and, you know, our customers, sometimes they don't realize like, yeah, if you do get good at this, people want to hear it because it is a unique instrument. And yeah so, so it's like and people are willing to pay now yeah, yeah what how you want how much you want to get paid honestly is up to you and then these things that we talk about are the things that you have to think about when you're going into it it's just not like you're gonna go play and then <laughs> you should plan it out you should do these things that dave talks about uh, you know when it, i've learned by Oh, I didn't have the right thing. <laughs> I thought it was going to yeah. be this. Oh, yeah. But yeah. like I needed this. And then I, we, you just went through it. But, you know, we kind of want to help you guys just to think about those things. And you can you can do it and you can make some good money. Like we've had customers that actually just gigged and paid for a whole pan yeah. with the gig yep. money. You know what I mean? And yeah. that was with the yeah. rental pan. So yeah. now people that buy a hand pan, you know, you know, they like to play it at their house, but you know what? Your friends and family would love for you to play at their event and they will pay you to do that. <laughs> yep. yep. It's, it's kind of crazy. So, yeah. And by the way, if anybody, Daniel, I think you have these QR codes. If anybody wants to tip us, by the way, <laughs> out there for watching this whole video, yeah, yeah, Daniel, I think he's got these QR codes. Probably the PayPal would be probably the best if you have it. Oh, yeah, there's, oh the, there's Venmo. That's there's what it works Venmo, too. And then there. That goes to my personal account, but this is the business account here at the Dave's Island. So uh, yeah, if you want to tip us five bucks, man, bring it on. We'd love to, we'd love to have a uh, keep the it up money. there for I'll keep it up there for a few for the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for the rest. And of by the way, time. the list that we were talking about earlier um, of all of those things about gigging, did you notice something glaring? The thing is that I noticed is the only place that music was listed is at the very top. All of this other stuff is business. <laughs> so it's just kind of interesting how they talk about the music business, right? And there you go. I mean, I didn't even think about it when I was writing it out, but you can just look at it right now. Like the first part was talking about learning how to play your music. And obviously you could go on and you could do a whole session on what kinds of music to play and that sort of thing. Yes. But all of this other stuff is super important when you get into the professional uh, area of playing and gigging and, and making music, uh, making money with music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, like for me, it was never about like making money. There's people that are professionals out there that this is what they do and this is their gig and this is, you know, and they're very serious about the gigs that they actually get. And I, I understand right now with COVID restrictions off and stuff, I noticed this, there's a lot more live gigs going on. So for the, those of you that are getting better at the hand pan, try new things first. Maybe do it for free. You have to get comfortable playing in front of people, and it's not going to happen one time. Right, and, yep. And the biggest thing is practice. I noticed... The more you practice and get good at your practice routine, that could be your routine <laughs> for the whole event. It's so crazy. And yeah. once you get and if you feel like you're practicing in the event, it makes your confidence goes up because you're like, oh, I'm just practicing and people are enjoying it and they, you don't realize it. That's it's that's how easy it can be. But yeah, yeah. Just do it. 
just do it. Yep, just share do your it. music. Share your music. That's what I, yep. I believe. So. All right, Daniel. Well, I'm going to share some music right now. I think we're going to call it a day. Thanks to everybody out there who tuned in. I hope you learned something today. Uh, Dave's Island Instruments. Don't forget to tip us. We've got our little QR codes right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> They're moving uh, all be over great the screen. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I'm going to play a little music for you. Daniel's going to cut it out. But have a great evening. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, just one thing. Let's see. Wait. Oh, Ham Hand Lady. I said good stuff. Pretty much works the same over here on the East Coast. But I thought I'm going to show this. Let's see. But I thought. I never thought about charging more for tough unloading. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely one. Yeah, it all depends. Like, let's say you're playing at a football stadium. Like, <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Uh, you might have to, like, walk half a mile to get to your location. You never know. So. Barbara said she's loved this first time she's seen the biz aspect of playing the hand pan. Thanks again. Bang. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Yep.